wedding. It's one of life's great rites of passage. Um, and it's a big milestone event, not just for those who are involved, but for those who surround them as well. Um, at the very least, it's an opportunity for us all to get together and say how little we've changed since we last saw each other. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> as a parent, there's a particular poignancy in finally seeing one of your children off the payroll. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes you back to all those milestones in life. The first smile, the first tooth, the first wobbly bike ride, the first day at school, the first driving lesson, the first kind of borrow a tenor, Dad. <laughs> You've heard from, from Nick that um, it's quite difficult to come up with juicy stories uh, on Thomas. Um, and uh, he was never a wild child. And as a parent, that was great at the time. Been really awful this week, looking for <laughs> juicy stuff to say. I have to say, James, that next year will be different. I've got yeah. loads of stuff on you. <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen these photos, there is actually a worse one in existence. Um, it actually sits in Thomas's passport, which oh. has six months to go. And in about 36 hours, we'll see if U.S. immigration still exists. <laughs> <laughs> I remember very well the day that Thomas was born. He was very late. Um, Angela and I had been eating a lot of green jelly up to them because that was her pregnancy craving of the time. Um, but it changed everything. Um, I suddenly saw myself and my relationship with my parents in a very different light. And I think these big set pieces remind us that there's a pattern and a rhythm to life that we don't always see. But actually, it's very strong, and it brings us together uh, through time and through distance and through hard times and through gentle times as well. So thank you all for being here, because you're an essential part of that gravitational field that holds families and friendships together over time. A wedding is also one of those few occasions when you have license to embarrass your children in public. Um, but as good, good fathers should do, I'm going to reserve that till later on and do a bit of dad dancing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nick talked briefly about Thomas's time at, uh, at school and on the school trips. Believe it or not, Thomas had a bit of a reputation at the time for being a sort of go-to kid when his friends had problems with girlfriends and boyfriends. Uh, he had a genuine knack for listening and not being judgmental and not trying to be right. Um, and like all teenage boys, he very quickly grew out of that. <laughs> Probably about the same time he realised that while being a good listener brought girls close, it didn't necessarily bring them close enough. <laughs> <laughs> but little boys grow up and they get rid of childhood things, and we're here today to celebrate the big love of Thomas's life. Unfortunately, the Seven Valley Railway couldn't accommodate all <laughs> today. <laughs> so we're here. Today, Anne joins our family, and we're delighted to welcome her. We love it to bits. And we're immensely proud of the determination she's shown recently in building up her own business um, with, with, in partnership with Ian, uh, who's around. And if you wander down the high street uh, later on today or tomorrow and see the Solomon Green shop window, uh, that's it. We've also been hugely impressed with the organisation that's gone into today. And if you've liked what you've seen, it's largely down to, to Anne's organisational capability over the last six years. <laughs> <laughs>